Good morning, class. Today, we will discuss um, the concepts with regards to leadership and management. But before we begin, let us start our lecture with a prayer. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Okay. Okay, so our topic for today class is a continuation of the SWOT analysis. Last time we discussed the basic concept and the introduction of the meaning of this SWOT analysis. So today, we will focus more on the factors and quadrants affecting SWOT analysis. Okay. In order for you to apply SWOT analysis in your organizational dilemma or problem. So SWOT analysis factors and quadrants by yours truly, your professor, attorney Alfredo El Mayo III. I am a registered nurse here in the Philippines and in the United States, especially in the state of New York. I am also a real estate broker. That's why you can see in my name, RN, USRN, and REB. And at the same time, I am a Juris Doctor. Okay. Now, Let's discuss um, internal and external factors with regards to SWOT analysis. So the aim of any SWOT analysis is to identify the key internal and external factors that are important to achieving the objective. Okay, so in a problem class, in a dilemma, there are factors contributing to that um, organizational problem. Okay, so in order for you to arrive to a decision, so you need to understand and take into consideration the different factors affecting your organization. So these factors can be internal, okay, your employees or your um, procedures, your policies, and external, okay? So if you are a logistics company, maybe the price of the gasoline has increased due to war, okay? So these are the external factors. So you need to take into consideration these factors in order for you to arrive to an intelligible decision, okay, on how to face or how to address your organizational dilemma or problem. So first is the internal factors, the strengths and weaknesses internal to the organization, okay. So for example, your employees, okay, human resources, in the organization is the best resources, okay? So if your employees are lazy and um, not very intelligent, of course, it will affect 
all facets of your organization. So, your production, your logistics, okay, depending on what type of organization you are in, okay. So, you should take into consideration all these factors, your strengths and weaknesses. Next is the external factors. So, these are the opportunities and threats presented by the external environment to the organization. Okay, so like what I said earlier, um, these are factors which is outside your control within the organization. So, if you are a logistics company, the price of gasoline, okay, if you are into manufacturing or food production, the price of the raw materials, okay, and so on and so forth. So let us look at each in details. Internal factors. So the internal factors may be viewed as strengths or weaknesses depending upon their impact on the organization's objectives okay example you are a logistics company and of course if you are a logistics company you need to have trucks okay vehicles drivers okay and so on and so forth so one factor um if you want to succeed is you need to have efficient drivers or qualified drivers and vehicles that is um, that can go anywhere in whatever environment okay strong vehicles road worthy vehicles okay so these are factors that contribute to the success of your company what may represent strengths with respect to one objective may be weaknesses for another objective, okay? So, um, bear in mind, class, that um, when you check your strengths and with weaknesses, because sometimes th there are factors uh, that affects these strengths and weaknesses, okay? Uh, take for example, if you are a logistics company, your driver, of course, if the driver, whether male or female, there are limitations. Okay, so this is a classic example when you're, if you have an objective, if you have qualified drivers, um, sometimes um, it can affect your your organization. Because, for example, male and female drivers, they have different rights class. A female, of course, because they, they bear, they can bear children. So, in law, they, of course, they are protected. For example, if they are pregnant, you need to give benefits. Okay? So, these are the considerations or these are the factors that you need to consider. Okay, so even though they are drivers in a logistic company, but male and female has different rights. Okay, so next, it is essential to note that the internal factors are within the control of the organization, of course, because um, it is a management prerogative. It is up to you whether you are a male or a female driver so it is within your control inside the organization such as operations finance marketing and other areas okay so these are the internal factors that affects the organization so these factors may include all of the four p's as well as personnel finance manufacturing capabilities and so on and so forth okay so when you say purpose the product the product the production okay the personnel okay and so on and so forth 
Now, in the other hand, there is the external factor which is outside the control of the organization. So, so our example is a logistics company. So if you are a logistics company, of course you don't have control on the price of the gasoline. Okay, so that's why you need to put it into consideration. So the external factors are out of the organization's control, such as political and economic factors, technology, competition, and other areas. Okay. So another example, if you are if you are a logistics company, like in Cebu, there is truck ban. Okay. So more often than not, your trucks cannot travel anytime. So there are there are specific time of the day where trucks are allowed to traverse in our thoroughfares. Okay. So it is an external factors. Political, economic factors, technology. Okay. How you monitor your employees, your competition, and so on and so forth. The external factors may also include macroeconomic matters, technological change, legislation, and socio-cultural changes, as well as changes in the marketplace or competitive positions. Okay, so these are external factors that would affect your organization of course the law like what i said earlier the truck ban in here in our place okay the the cultural aspect for example if you are into food production um you produce pork okay of course uh, your product will not be eaten by the Muslim community. So there is already limitation. So all of these are external factors. Now let's go to SWAT quadrants. Okay. So what is a quadrant class? So when you say quadrants, this is another approach in the application of SWOT analysis. Hence, you can use SWOT analysis to identify the areas where you can have the most beneficial strategies and targets based on the current situation of the organization. Okay, so this is how you strategize class. You target uh, what needs to be addressed first. Okay. So the analyzing SWOT is done to referring to the SWOT matrix, which is this um, quadrants. A SWOT analysis is a first but critical step in developing an organizational strategy, examining a company's internal capabilities, its strengths, weaknesses, and ex external environment, its opportunities and threats helps to create strategies that can proactively contend with organizational changes. Okay, so these are the four quadrants class. Okay, as you can see, one, two, three, four. So this is the the steps you can make in or the, or the approach you can make in order to address the organizational problem or dilemma. So there are four quadrants that are present in the SWOT matrix. For short-term goals or objectives, the organization should focus on at least one or two quadrants for long-term. It is advisable to include the goals coming from each of the four quadrants in order to create balance. Okay. So, as you can see in the diagram, there are four quadrants. Okay, that that would help you, or that would affect the dilemma. Okay, and affect your decision making 
So let us look at each in detail. Okay, the first quadrant is the internal strengths match with external opportunity. Okay, so this is the approach. That's your strength and the external opportunity. So quadrant number one will help the organization in formulating strategies by taking advantage of the strengths so that it can pursue the best opportunities at its very own disposal. This is especially important because there may be opportunities which may be present for a short period of time. Okay? So like what I said earlier, um, you examine your internal factor, okay, your strength and weaknesses, and then also you examine the external factors, the opportunities and threats. So in this approach, the, the SWOT matrix, the first quadrant must be uh, mixed. Your strength with the opportunities in the external factors. And you should consider also that there are opportunities that is um, time bound or available only in a short period of time. Okay. Next, quadrant number two. So quadrant number two, um, internal weaknesses is paired to external opportunities. Okay. The strengths and threats. Quadrant number two helps the organization by formulating strategies by using its strength in order to lessen or eliminate the threats that the organization is currently um, facing. Okay? So, if there are inter internal uh, factors, the weaknesses of the company, then you use your your strengths in order to deal or address these weaknesses okay and then um you should pair it with the external factor of threats okay so eliminate as much as possible the threat in the uh, of the external factor so that's the quadrant number two Quadrant number three, internal strength match with external threats. So weaknesses and opportunities. Quadrant three helps the organization through the formulation of strategies. Okay, so approach. This is um, a tool in order for you to make a wise decision. By opening up the opportunities along the road, by reducing some weaknesses that are currently present, okay? So, your weaknesses, you um, eliminate them when by pairing it with opportunities, okay? So, uh, as much as possible, you reduce these weaknesses by... Um, by getting the opportunities. Quadrant number four. Quadrant number four, internal weaknesses relative to external threats. So the approach is um, weaknesses and threats. Quadrant number four helps in the formulation of strategies that will help in mitigating, okay, so when you say mitigate, lessen, or even avoiding the threats that has resulted from the organization's very own weaknesses, okay? So in quadrant number four, um, you take into consideration the weaknesses and the threats in order for the organization to avoid, okay, or lessen these threats and weaknesses okay so these are the quadrants class the four quadrants are 
tools, okay? In order for the organization to come to come up with a wise decision, okay, in addressing the organizational dilemma or problem. So SWOT analysis on its own is meaningless unless it is backed by solid, well-defined action plan. It works best when part of an overall strategy or in a given context or situation. Okay, so um, in SWOT analysis class, there must be an action plan and this action plan must be well defined. So when you say well defined, you take into consider consideration all external factors, internal factors, and the four quadrant approach. Okay. A simple strategy can be defined by using the four A's model. The four A's model stands for. So these are the four A's uh, model approach class. First is aim. What is the goal or objective of your company? Okay. So, in order for a company to reach your goal, you must first define these goals or objective so that your company will have a direction. The next A is assess. Is the SWOT review itself. Okay. Assess the situation. Assess your, the, the internal factors, external factors, okay? Assess the environment of your company. Next, A is the activate. Identify the strengths or measures of success and use them to your advantage, okay? So if you have um, in place protocols, you activate them, okay? as part of the strength of your company. And then lastly is apply. Okay, take action in order to solve the dilemma inside the organization or company. So this is how you create strategy with regards uh, to SWOT analysis. Okay. The challenges of SWOT is the matching of specific internal and external factors okay so you match them by virtue of the four quadrants approach which creates a strategic matrix and which makes sense the four combi the four combinations of the various factors of swats were described by Weyrich in 18 i mean 1982 as follows. So in this um, diagram class, number one, maxim means maximize, okay? So with regards to strength, you maximize the strength. With regards to opportunities, you maximize the opportunities, okay? So that's the quadrant combination. Number two, maximize and then minimize. So, with regards to your strength of the company, maximize it. With regards to threats, minimize the threats. Um, approach number three is minimize and maximize. So, with regards to weaknesses, minimize the weaknesses inside your organization. On the other hand, with regards to opportunities, you must maximize the opportunities. And last, last approach is the mini-mini, okay? Number four, minimize your weaknesses and then minimize threats, okay? So these are the quadrant combinations class that we discussed earlier. So let us look at each in detail. Okay. So maxi-maxi. First approach, this combination shows the organization's strengths and opportunities. In essence, an organization should, be, should strive to maximize its strengths to capitalize on new opportunities. Okay, so in order to solve a problem, 
okay, in order to succeed, eh, an organization should maximize its core strength and at the same time develop opportunities in order for a company to succeed. Okay. Um, second approach, Maximini. So this combination shows the organization strengths in consideration of the threats, such as from competitors. Okay. So in essence, an organization should strive to use its strength to parry or minimize threats. Okay. So let, let us take our example earlier. If you are a logistics company. So what is the threat? What is the outside threat? What, what, what is the external factors? So of course, you don't have the power or control of the price of gasoline. Okay. So maybe to minimize this threat in the future, you will stack. You will have your own depot stock gasoline when it is um, when the price is still minimal so that later on if there are uh, changes in the prices you, your your logistic company is already protected okay so that's one example next mini maxi okay so this combination shows the organization's weaknesses in tandem with opportunities it is an ex exertion to conquer the organization's weakness by making most of any new opportunities okay so you minimize the weakness of your company by taking on new opportunities okay and then lastly minimize the weaknesses in your company and at the same time minimize the threats. So this combination shows the organization's weaknesses by comparison with the current external threats. This is most definitely a defensive strategy to minimize an organization's internal weaknesses and avoid external threats. Okay, So identify the threats in order to avoid it. And then minimize the company's um, weaknesses, okay, by reorganizing the company. So that's the quadrant combinations. So do you have any questions, class, or clarifications with regards to the different factors affecting the organization and the four quadrants approach? Any questions or clarifications, class? Mr. Kevin? No, sir. Okay, so if there if there is none, I will turn off the recording. <laughs>